What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of AI Buzz. Thank you so much for tuning in today. The big day is finally here, and we have the performance comparison of TensorFlow on a MacBook M1 compared to a deep learning workstation. I made a video about a week ago on how the M1 MacBook fared in a CPU machine learning model test, and it did extremely well. If you want to check that one out, I'll put a link in the description, but today is more based on how it performs in a GPU based test. Since the M1 pretty much crushed my previous MacBook in the CPU test, today I thought it would be a little bit more of competition to put it against my deep learning workstation. This new competitor has 32 gigabytes of RAM, a GTX 1070 with eight gigabytes of onboard RAM by itself, as well as a liquid cooled i7 processor. Plus it has some RGB lighting in there, which scientifically makes it 20% faster. Now, I'm just kidding about that last part, but what I mean is this computer is definitely a worthy competitor. In order to test out the new M1 MacBook with TensorFlow, you're gonna to have to go to Apple's GitHub repository and git clone their TensorFlow macOS repo. And once you do that and install it, which might take a little bit of finagling and uh, some, some trickery, I'll come out with a video on how to do that uh, in a couple days. Once you're able to do that, you're gonna be ready to go with TensorFlow. In order to do this performance comparison test, I found some benchmark code by William Chang. And what he put out on GitHub was convolutional neural network code that's gonna allow us to compare performance between different deep learning workstations. So that could include the M1 MacBook. It can include my, my GTX 1070 station here. Point is we want the same code so that we can compare it across different computers. So I decided to use this benchmark code as well. And one of the main reasons for that is not only to compare these two, but there's other performance metrics that are posted in that, that forum. So he looks at how the M1 Mac mini compares to the, the MacBook Air M1. So we want to use the same code and really see how the different M1 products compare. Thanks again to William for putting that together. And I'm going to be sure to put a link in the description to that GitHub code. If anyone else watching wants to check it out and try for themselves, this could be a really good way to see how your current computer compares to the M1 MacBook or the M1 Mac mini with William's numbers. Without any further ado, let's walk through what we're going to test it on. So here's the code. We're gonna be training a convolutional neural network, which are common in computer vision problems. And we're gonna be training that on the MNIST digit data set. I won't step through the entire set of code, but essentially we're reading in the digits. We're normalizing the pixel values to the maximum of 255. We're defining our convolutional neural network model. And then we're training this model using 10 epochs or iterations on the batch size, which is set to 128 samples for our first run. I also have a timer in there to see how long this takes. I initialize the start time right before the fitting step so that nothing else is included in this time. Okay, enough blabbing, let's run this thing. And we're off. So you can see the program is stepping through each of the epochs where every batch of the sample set is being sent to the GPU and getting their weights and biases updated. You can see in the task manager on the workstation that it's using that entire GTX 1070, which by itself has more RAM than the MacBook M1. Well, we have a winner. The workstation cranked through this in 50 seconds. Give it a little bit for the M1 MacBook. So you can see in the activity monitor of the MacBook that it's using about 60 to 70% of the M1 GPU, and it's utilizing the four high performance cores, which are processors four, five, six, and seven in the panel. The other four processors or the low performing cores are not being utilized as much.
Training on the MacBook has finished and it took three minutes and 57 seconds. What do these results mean exactly? At first, it might seem like the MacBook got crushed and it kind of did, <laughs> but recognize what it's up against. This is a machine that I use for some pretty heavy duty machine learning workloads. And based on the results of the CPU model test that the M1 did really well in, I knew this laptop would be up for this challenge. And the MacBook actually did really well. It only took four minutes to train a model on 45,000 images of handwritten digits and can do so with about 99% accuracy. That's pretty darn good. And there's one important thing to note that makes this even more surprising. This was done on a MacBook Air. So there is no fan to help with the cooling aspect of, of this system. So like I said, William tested this on the M1 Mac Mini and found that the performance with this exact same code took about 22 seconds per epoch that it trained on. So if you add that up, it's about three minutes and 40 seconds of total training time. And that means it had about a 20 second speed increase over the M1 MacBook Air. Let's try a more taxing workload on the M1. This time we're gonna increase the batch size to 256 images at a time. So we're gonna be sending it more data to work on at any given moment. And my thought process here is that we're gonna be sending more samples to the GPU to try and train all at once, which typically is gonna tax the system a little harder, use up more of that onboard RAM and just push it a little further. Is the M1 gonna get bogged down with this increased batch size? Let's find out. And we're off. The workstation has finished in 46 seconds. Pretty much blew through that workload. There are less training sets to cycle through due to the increased batch size, so this is gonna run more quickly on both systems. And what was really impressive is that we've not quite reached the limit of the M1 yet. Okay, so the M1 has finished. It did this workload in two minutes and 41 seconds. And what's really impressive about this is that the limit of the M1 has not yet been reached. If it was bogged down, this probably would have taken even longer than the, the previous one. And instead of getting bogged down by that higher batch size, it really handled it well and, and trained very quickly. If we, if we take a look at the CPU of the workstation training the same model, we see that it takes about six minutes and 52 seconds. So that means the fanless M1 processor is 70% faster than my pretty solid liquid cooled CPU. We're definitely seeing the new M1 MacBook become more of a contender in the machine learning space, now especially since TensorFlow is optimized for this M1 chip. Based on the results of this performance test, where does this leave the prospective buyers of the M1 MacBook who want to do machine learning on this system? Well, I would say if you want to do CPU-based models mainly and do some deep learning on the scale of the MNIST dataset, and the M1 MacBook could be a really great fit for you. You might sacrifice some training time, but you're gonna gain high portability and an overall great system if you need it for something like college coursework. If you think these aspects describe you, I'll be sure to put a link in the description to check out the one that I used in this demo. However, if you wanna do more intense deep learning workloads, that speed difference is really gonna add up. So in that case, you may want to consider building a more dedicated workstation that is going to really give you those speed enhancements that you might like. I have a lot of other videos on my channel that describe the different aspects of machine learning workstations. So if you're interested in building your own, be sure to check those out. That's about all I have for you today, wrapping up part two of the M1 MacBook machine learning test. We saw today that the M1 MacBook fared reasonably well against a pretty serious deep learning workstation. I'll be sure in the future to do more investigation on different aspects of machine learning with this computer. If you have any ideas for videos that you wanna see, be sure to put those in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, please think about dropping a like on this video as well as subscribing to the channel.
I'm excited to keep putting out a lot of machine learning content for you guys, so stay tuned. Have a good day. Bye.